Okay. Hi, we're here with Jonathan Lien, and this is Brian Maples. We're going to do an interview. And uh, how are you doing today, Jonathan? I'm doing great, and thanks for having me, Brian. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, for those of you that don't know, and I believe, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, you used to have a YouTube channel, Jonathan? I did, yes. But um, I uh, decided to, um, you know, be um, more private. Uh, a few years ago and just focus on the business you know i'm i'm not a, a big you know youtube person so right. it just doesn't fit my personality you know i like just to work in the background and just make money i had nothing wrong with that <laughs> so you i mean so speaking of money um you've done pretty well since you haven't been on youtube so obviously you don't need to monetize youtube to make money you've been doing pretty well on your own um yeah can you tell us a little bit about just your background and what you do? And um, and I, I'd like to hear, I know already the background, a lot of it, maybe there's something I don't know yet that you can tell us, but um, you have quite an extensive background in drop shipping. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you did before that, where you got started, and uh, how you came to this point. Yeah, so, so I started out as a software engineer back in the uh, mid-90s. And I was um, in corporate America for over 20 years before I discovered uh, eBay dropshipping back in 2016. So 2016. Okay. by uh, early 2017, I left my corporate job and started doing the eBay dropshipping full time. And fast forward today, I manage a bunch of eBay and Amazon stores for partners. So that's, that's Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's going really well, and uh, I'm very, very fortunate and grateful for all the amazing partners that we have. And how many how many partners do you have estimated about about right now that you that you help? Yeah, uh, um, roughly about fifty partners at the moment, and it's uh, uh, growing every month. You know, just through word of mouth. I I don't advertise. I don't market. You know, just people right. referring other people to the business. And, and when you say partners, can you describe kind of what you mean? Like what does that entail and how does that work? Yeah, sure. So a partner is someone who has a store and wants us to manage it fully. So we do everything from listing to order fulfillment to customer service. Awesome. So you take care of everything on, on that end. Is there anything that you kind of expect a partner to do? And I know we have a little yeah. bit of a different relationship, but uh, can you speak to your other partners? Yeah, so we have three types of partners. We have the first type of partner is a passive partner. Like they're not interested in doing anything with the business, right? So uh, they just uh, want us to run the whole show, right? The second type of partner is someone who's, um, you know, a little bit involved. They might help out with the customer service. Um, and um, that's as much as they want to do, right? And then the third type of partner is one that's very involved and they add a lot of value to the partnership because they bring their knowledge and experience from previous e-commerce or business, you know, uh, ventures that they were involved in. And they tell us, you know, provide us valuable feedback on what we can do to make the partnership better, make the store better. Sure. So, yeah. So what what do you think you're how are you different from and then you said you don't advertise, so that's what I really like. You know, I see a lot of different things out there for done for you programs and they you know, they tell you you give us thirty thousand dollars and we'll make you rich. So you're not really doing any of that, right? You're just kinda of silent and you're kind of in the background. Uh you've obviously built it from word of mouth, which is great because you know, that says to me that you're doing something right. Um so how do you think you're different from that? those people that are running YouTube ad, YouTube ads constantly trying to get people to sign up for their, you know, $30,000 I'll build you a store programs. Yeah. Well, first of all, we don't charge any upfront fee like a lot of these um, providers, right? Cause I think it's, it's just not um, good to do that. Right. You're already off on the wrong, wrong footing with the other partner. Right. So right. as the managing partner, you need to prove, that you can make this profitable and it is you know uh once it is profitable then 
then you can split it and, you know, based on your partnership agreement, right? So that's the one major difference. The, the, the second thing I would say is that um, we really don't make any promises and guarantees. You know, I think a lot of it is hype and this uh, promotional, you know, mumbo jumbo that uh, a lot of these providers try to uh, get you excited, you know, you know, just a bunch of promises that they can't really fulfill. So I, I want to set realistic expectations with the partners that, you know, there's no guarantees and uh, it's just not a, you know, get rich quick type of, of business. Right. Yeah. And the, the third thing that makes it unusual is that we actually provide the working capital in most cases, meaning we are buying these products when they get a sale uh, either on eBay or Amazon. So there's really no risk on the other partner, <laughs> right. right? They control the money, right? Uh, they are uh, expecting us to pay for the products in advance and we invoice them. And then we, uh, you know, hope that the partner does their part and pay us back you know, uh, reimburse us for the products. So those are the three main things that make us different than the other service providers. And, and that's almost hard to believe, but if I didn't experience it myself, I can tell you that's legit. Um, of course, once you get to a certain level, you are expected to put in money. If you get to, you know, what is it? I'm talking about 100000 dollars then you're expected to put money in, which is understandable because you're spending all of your own money. Now, you don't, wouldn't just take anybody off the street, right? It's not like people would just come and sign up. You have to have somebody that was recommended to you, right? So it's got to be a two-way street, and there's got to be some trust there as far as who's recommended to you, right? You wouldn't just take anybody, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, if everyone is through a, a current partner, you know, who's uh, working with us. So, yeah, we um, typically don't take people off the streets but you know I, I give everyone a chance right I mean they don't uh, each partner is, is very different and uh, they come with uh, you know just uh, from all walks of life right so uh, I don't judge any partner right uh, if they're um, you know someone who I know is very successful or not it doesn't matter we, we give everyone a chance but yeah I mean there, awesome. there must be a, a vetting process so that okay. you know we, we know at least that uh, this partner is not going to, you know, do something um, that's going to hurt us, right? Because we're basically entrusting them with uh, eventually a lot of money. Yes. And, yes. Um, and it's, it's, it's built a lot on trust, you know, that, um, you know, the other partner is going to, you know, live up to their, uh, you know, side of the bargain. Completely understandable. There's a lot of money involved there. So um, that's that's very interesting. So, like my the what what still wonders to me is like you've grown this thing so big, and you have how many virtual assistants? I know you've actually downsized a little bit, but you're actually looking to reverse that trend, and eventually get to hopefully three or four hundred virtual assistants. Is that is that what I heard? Was that correct? Yeah. So currently we have 105 VAs, wow. and that's just um, our internal team. We also work with uh, a, a few outsourcing firms and they have about 40 to 50 VAs that we um, have working for us too. And yeah, our goal wow. is to eventually grow it to about 300 to 400 VAs in a, a few years. And um, as much as possible, I, I, I want to, um, you know, automate and streamline our business so that we don't um, hire as much, but, you know, there is a need for the VAs, you know, as much as I want to automate everything, um, all the VAs we have are, are necessary for the smooth operation of the business. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me about like the first VA you hired. Were you nervous at all or did like who, or who turned you on to that and how did you get into that? Did you just say, hey, I'm going to hire a VA and you talk to a firm or I mean, was it that simple or did you talk to somebody that already had a VA? Like, how did you get into that? I never did ask you that. So I'm curious. Yeah. So in the first year, I was part of a mastermind. And we met once a month. All the members of the mastermind already had VAs, and they kept on telling me, "Oh, you got to get a VA. That's how you're gonna uh, take your store to the next level." And I was very reluctant. 
And the reason, the, the, the top three reasons was one, I didn't think I knew the business that well. So I didn't right. uh, feel qualified to teach somebody something that I didn't know that well. That's a valid, second, yeah, very uh, valid. Second, um, I didn't know the business was going to be successful. And I didn't want to put this VA who has entrusted me, you know, for their livelihood out of work, you know, to be unemployed. Uh, third, I felt um, I could do it better than anyone else. You know, I'm kind of like a perfectionist, right? right? I didn't want to give control and delegate work to someone that I don't really know. And their quality might not be as good as mine, you know, and um, I, I would just be disappointed with their work. So those are the three reasons. But, you know, uh, after uh, a while, I, I realized that, yeah, it makes sense to hire a VA. So I, I got my VA very reluctantly. And for the first few weeks, I um, didn't have much work for her to do because I, I really didn't want to give up control right. of the business. You I, know, I was very, you. very, yeah, I, I, I was very, very reluctant to, uh, you know, delegate the stuff that I was doing because I felt I was um, probably better at doing those things. So clearly you've gotten past that. Um, and when you mentioned mastermind, you're talking about, was that David Vu's mastermind or was that another, uh, I've never heard of the mastermind. Is that like a course or is that a, a group you met with? Yeah. So a, a mastermind is just a, a few uh, people who have, you know, common goals. So these are people that, uh, all started on the same course that um, that I took, I and we, um, you know, just uh, form a, a small group where we met online once a month to support each other and, and uh, help each other uh, succeed in the business. Awesome, and 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 clearly you've got by the VAs because you have a hundred some now. You want to have three to four hundred, and kind of what are your financial goals in order to support that many VAs? That has to be pretty hefty, right? So. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing now? Um, it doesn't have to be exact, just an estimate of kind of what you do revenue wise and, and maybe just a little bit on the profit end and where your goal is and what you ultimately want to do with that um, once you reach those really lofty goals. I know they're very high. Yeah, revenue wise, we're about two million a month in uh, sales and um, about 15% is uh, profit. So we're looking at about, you know, 300,000 a month in gross profits and a hundred thousand in expenses. So that's you know? before your VAs are paid. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. The 300,000 is the gross profit before the VAs right. are paid. And um, we roughly have about a hundred thousand dollars in expenses, right? Most of that is the, the VAs, right? Uh, the, and some other uh, things, the, sure. Yeah. And then we have development costs. We have software costs. We have some overhead, but the majority of our expenses is paying the VAs. That's amazing. So you went from working a regular job in 2016 to, from what I understand, you said you heard it on a podcast, right, about eBay dropshipping, and you've developed it. And that's really not, it's only been six years. That's not even, really not even, I'm not sure when in 2016 you started, but that's amazing you're able to grow it to such a large level uh, in such a short period of time. Um, I mean, that's amazing that yeah. you're able to scale it, right? So it's very scalable. Yeah, it's very scalable, and I'm um, amazed myself because uh, my goal in the beginning was just to make a hundred dollars a month, you <laughs> right. know. And I really didn't have uh, very high expectations for this business. I've never done any uh, business, let alone an online business. So, to me, it was just um, you know a very um, you know almost um, impossible dream, right? But I just didn't want to work in nine to five anymore. And I was looking for a way out and I thought, Hey, you know, this online stuff might have some merit. So I just started doing it and really focused and, uh, you know, really, um, wanted to make a success out of it. Awesome. And clearly you did that because you're killing it right now and you want to go to, you want to 10 times this. Is that accurate to say? Like you want 10 yeah. times the numbers or maybe not 10 times, but 50 times the numbers? Is that? Yeah. I mean, um, my goal is to do a hundred thousand a year in sales. Wow. Okay. And, and after that, I, I feel, um, it's enough, right? Because I don't want to, um, <clears throat> just constantly grow. Right. Did you say a hundred uh, million I, I, a year in sales? A year in sales. hundred million. Uh, 
hundred million a year in sales. I thought you said hundred right? thousand right there, but hundred million, which is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, a uh, hundred million year uh, a year in sales, mm-hmm. and after that, um, I want to do some other uh, things that that's also very important for me. So, you know, e commerce is is definitely uh, the uh, the main focus right now. But uh, once it hits a certain point, I want to transition to doing something else with my life. Sure. So you have like a 10 year plan. Is that accurate to say? I think we were talking the other day. Yeah, we have a 10 year plan. And, um, you know, the first part of that is e-commerce, right? And after, um, you know, we achieve certain uh, milestones with the e-commerce, then I'll I'll, um, switch over to uh, investments, which is my, uh, you know, second passion, um, you know, and then third um, is philanthropy, you know, giving back, uh, helping others who are less fortunate than us. And that's awesome. I mean, not many people have a goal like that, and I think it's fantastic. Um, and you also had mentioned that you're going to have so many VAs, but you want to give back as far as the VAs go. Because as you and I both know, a lot of these VAs that are working over, uh, Philippines is the main place, right? That's where yeah. I think the best VAs come from, I, sh- I would say. Um, because they know English well a lot of times. They're, they're well-trained, and, and they have a lot of education. Um, and you want to give back a little bit on that end. And hopefully, you said, maybe turn over part of the business to them. Uh, we don't know that for sure, right? But you, you have kind of goals to, to help them out. Is that accurate to say? Yes. My goal is to make the VAs financially wealthy because – I don't want the people working to me to live paycheck by paycheck and to have like, you know, just financial problems, right? Because, you know, um, you know, I've been to the Philippines, I have lived in their homes, I've stayed there. And I've seen the life in the Philippines. And it's, um, you know, um, not that nice. So I feel with the business, um, I can help um, them to become financially independent. Okay, so that's our goal. That the awesome. VAs are able to uh, make not just a, a nice and steady income, but to uh, be uh, have profit sharing. We we also do investments for them. We give them a lot of benefits. But my goal is to make them financially wealthy, so that they can choose if they want to work with us. They want to retire, start their own business help their families, right? We, we want them to be financially free. They should not be a victim to society. They should not be, you know, uh, dependent on the job. I mean, I would love it if they stay, but I also want to give them the option and the freedom to do whatever they want outside of the, the company. Yeah, it's like the age old uh, thing, you know, when you teach somebody what you know, and then, you know, you want the best for them. You don't want to lose them because they're so valuable to you. But at the same time, you want to see them grow and go off and do their own thing. So I understand that. And it's, I'm glad you're on the side of wanting to see them grow because if they're going to do it, they're going to do it with or without you. If you can be a big part of that and help them out with that, that's, I think that's fantastic. Um, so what a great goal. Uh, I really hope that you reach those goals. I think you will. I know you will. You've grown so much from 2016, and I don't see any reason why you can't scale it above and beyond that. Um, so really, I appreciate this. There's so much great information here. If you had somebody that was just starting out in e-commerce or drop shipping, do you think it's still possible to maybe just get to maybe even a smaller level than you? Do you think it's still possible to make a living online selling things? Or And where do you see it moving in the future? Um, I know we've been doing Facebook shops, and that's an exciting thing. Where do you see e-commerce moving? And you know, can you give advice to the guy that's just starting out? Um, you know, what, where would you start? Yeah, definitely. Well, first of all, it is still possible. I mean, everyone has the same opportunity to be successful in e-commerce. It just depended on them, right? It, that's the, the, the most important uh, critical success factor, right? Totally. It's the individual, right? So there's still a, a massive opportunity in, uh, in e-commerce where there's eBay, Amazon, Facebook, Walmart. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, where I see things going, I believe um, Amazon and eBay are the dominant players, 
you know, for the foreseeable future. But I see Facebook shops and Walmart as also being very, very important marketplaces in the future, right? So these these uh, two platforms are going to start, um, you know, uh, taking market share away from uh, eBay and Amazon. So, you know, my suggestion for those who are interested in e-commerce is just to stick with one, learn it really well. And once you are confident with that platform, then if you uh, still want to diversify, then, you know, you can pick another platform, another marketplace that you uh, are interested in. But learn one and be really good at it before you start jumping to uh, too many marketplaces. I think that's great advice. I would definitely recommend the same. Um, I was really good with Amazon, and then I kind of came to you, and I've learned a lot so much about eBay and Facebook shops. We're kind of learning together. So I totally agree. Learn one really well and then branch off because sometimes it can get overwhelming if you try to take on too much too fast. Um, and like you said, with the emerging ones, I think you can do it very cheaply as well. Um, there's definitely some challenges, but I think uh, from what we've seen, Facebook shops seems to be – such an emerging market that you can really do well with drop shipping, especially. Um, For sure. I, yeah, and I think we're starting to realize that you can do that, but uh, it's it's an emerging market like Walmart. I, I've I've heard can be huge as well. Um, so if you could go back and give your former self some advice, let's say you go back to 2016 or even before that, what would you tell yourself that you kind of learned along the way that you didn't know back then, but you know you would want your younger self to know. Maybe it would have saved you some time and just maybe a good piece of advice. Yeah, so I would tell my younger self to believe in yourself more, right? I um, had a lot of doubts because I spent more than 20 years of my life in corporate America. And, yeah. you know, when you are uh, uh, been in corporate America for that long, it kind of brainwashed you in a yeah. way that you know you cannot succeed unless you work for a big corporation right so it was very very scary for me to be an entrepreneur to have my own business so i had lots of doubts i had sleepless nights you know there were um you know times when i thought i made a huge mistake and i should go back to nine to five right away and mm -hmm. forget this whole entrepreneurship stuff Right. So that would be my number one thing, just to have more more faith and belief in my myself and my own abilities, you know, than uh, uh, getting, um, you know, um, uh, worry about if this is going to work out or not. That's fantastic advice. Um, I couldn't say any better. That, that would be great advice for my younger self as well, because I think that's the biggest thing, the biggest obstacle for people. They don't have any confidence and they don't believe it can be done because. You know, kids, if you've ever read books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or they get that backwards, but he talks about that, how we're trained to kind of go to high school, go to college, get a job, you know, work till your retirement, right? Save up, save up, save up. And then maybe if you're 65, 70 years old, you can retire, right? Um, that's kind of the pathway that's set for so many of the young kids. And it was when I was in school as well. Um, but I think that's changed. And I think people are starting to open their eyes. And if you're scared, you just got to go for it. You don't want to be on your deathbed saying, man, I wish I tried. You know, you don't want to have those regrets. Uh, I think that's such a huge thing. Um, so obviously, you're much happier doing what you do now versus what you were doing in corporate America. Does that suffice to say? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, you know, when I was working for the uh, big companies, I really felt like, you know, my my soul was being soul. sucked out. That's yeah, the it was word. Just That's the word. So, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I really didn't want to be there. I dreaded Mondays. I look forward to the weekends. You know, I just didn't um, feel I was you know at the right place. You know, but I just didn't know how to escape. Right, and yes. um, this <laughs> uh, the, you know the e-commerce has has really given me the uh, keys to, to my freedom. That's awesome, man. Uh, and totally, I totally understand. I think every entrepreneur I've talked to, that's the same thing. Like It's like soul sucking. Just, it just, it just, it, it's unbelievable the difference between, and I was in, I don't want to say corporate America, but various jobs, 
I mean, I even worked customer service, did training for like 10 years. And it's just, you're working in a cubicle. There's no windows. And, you know, you go in there, you're on a computer all day. And you punch in and punch out. And it's just miserable, soul-sucking. Um, it, it's really rough to do every day. For the rest of your life, just so you can retire when you're 65 if you're lucky. Uh, yeah, I totally understand. And, and I'm so glad you made it out. And other people, hopefully, watching this will make it out as well. And do something they really enjoy doing. Um, I, yeah. I, is there anything else you'd want to say? Uh, anything else you want to, uh, you know, touch on while we're on this interview? As far as, you know, any information you want to put out there? Yeah, I would say for those who are interested in doing the e-commerce, to give it a try. You know, I mean, there's really uh, hardly any risk in trying, right? I mean, you know, the most you'll lose is maybe a few hundred dollars, or maybe right? Maybe thousands, but, right? But not, yeah. it's not gonna be yeah, like- Yeah, I mean, any. yeah, I mean, you can recover from the failure of your of an e-commerce store, but what if it succeeds, right? right? What if it succeeds? So, you know, and to be successful, you just need to focus, right? Work work really, really hard, right? That's the, the thing that, you know, a lot of these um, YouTubers don't want to tell you that it's a lot of grind, grinding work, right? It's a lot of work, you know. <laughs> yeah, you hear passive um, income all the time. And there's, no, no, there's no, really no such thing as passive income. Yeah, there, there's yeah. no such thing as passive income. So yeah. work really, really hard. And then the last thing is don't give up. I've seen so many people uh, join e-commerce and then eventually they quit, right? But those who stick around, they become successful, right? Absolutely. So that's that's the the most important thing is just don't quit. Just keep on going, even though you know you feel like things aren't working out. It it it, it will work out. You know, just believe in yourself. Absolutely, I couldn't have said it better. I totally agree. Great advice. Um, you know, and and thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for talking about all your experience. And, and uh, you really, you're an inspiration uh, in so many ways to me. And I think it's been great learning from you and working with you. Um, so, you know, I'm inspired. And hopefully you'll, you know, inspire many other people out there who watch this and uh, realize that, you know, you can get to the point where you're independent. Uh, we've both done it. Of course, you're on a much higher level. But I aspire to get to kind of where you, you are. But, you know, you, don't, you can make a normal living even off of e-commerce there's nothing stopping you except for you have to put the work in and you have to put the time in so um thank you so much jonathan for joining us and uh i really appreciate it thank you so much it's a real honor to be uh with, with talking to you and be on this interview and you're a huge inspiration to me too and i want to say keep up the great work you're doing you know you're you're uh, changing lives of your team just uh, amazing amazing work that you're doing and you're just an outstanding person to Thank work you. with. I, I, the, the feeling is mutual, really it is. So um, I wouldn't be this far without you. So uh, much appreciated and uh, you know, we'll continue to work together and hopefully bring our successes uh, in the future, uh, maybe on a future video, uh, maybe on Facebook shops and, and talk about some of that, how we're kind of moving into that territory, hopefully to make ourselves big there. So um, it's, it's always interesting, always fun to talk to you. And it's always always very interesting to talk business with you because we have so many of the same interests uh, when it comes to just making money and not so much the money, the, the hunger or greed for money. It's more so about the process and how to do it, and it's just very interesting. So um, always fun. We really appreciate it, and thank you so much, Jonathan. You have a, a great night. Thank you, Brian. Take care. All right, you too.